Hello, everyone. Can you hear me well? Yes. Oh, I can see a lot of young people, which is very nice. How many of you know what is microfabrication, nanotechnology? Anyone can raise? Yeah, there. Any of you are engineers in this field? Not many. Okay, um, I need to educate you a little bit. Also explain why we need microtechnology and uh, what is actually this. So before, we, before I start educating, let me introduce myself. Um, Chipra briefly mentioned how we met and what we do. Um, I'm a founder and CEO of Atlant 3D. And uh, this is the company that we develop in some unique technology. Other things you can read as well, so I will skip them just to save some time. Uh, Atlant 3D is unique technology in the way that we are the first who develop this uh, selective area direct atomic layer printing technology. In other words, it's uh, something more simple. It's atomic layer 3D printer. 3D printer that can print with atoms. And you could see here like a beam that come into the surface and then some uh, circuits on a surface. So this is some brief idea what we do. And um, in reality, it's more complex and more simple. Uh, let's start why this is important, why microfabrication is important. And uh, let's start from Stone Age. Uh, why Stone Age? Because actually our society is defined by how fast and how well we can process materials. There are a few uh, uh, speakers talking, were talking about the future. So the future is defined how well we can process different materials. In Stone Age, we were very good in carving stones and making axes and then uh, arrows for the, uh, for the shooting animals. Then there was Iron and Bronze Age. We could process metals. The next was actually the, the, the age when we can start processing silicon. So until recently, we, and until now, we still live in a silicon age, even though, uh, even though nobody talks about this. But silicon age gave us a possibility to make a first transistor, for which it was awarded with a Nobel Prize, the first integrated circuit, and all of this led to creation of first computers and smartphones that every one of you has in a pocket. So from big to small, the first here on top, you can see the first IBM computer, the size of the room. Now we have a quantum computers that are a little bit smaller, they still bulky. What can be the next phase in a quantum computing? Below you could see one of the first photo cameras. You could see it's like a truck. Now the photo camera, as small as can be in your pocket, in your smartphone, giving you hundreds of pictures, probably some of you even make now, right? We use electronics everywhere. And microfabrication, nanotechnology, is the technology that helps to make micro nano chips. They, we use them everywhere from pharmaceuticals to display, to energy, to, to cars, mobility, everything. All these lights are with microelectronics. We cannot live today without this. We produce food, we pro even air pur purification is made because of this. What is the problem with this? And this is a very important part. For the last 60 years, since the first transistor was invented, first integrated circuit was invented, we didn't change the method how to manufacture microelectronics. And this is a big issue, because this is a multi-step process that requires separate equipment from one process to another. We're building huge factories. Everyone probably read uh, articles like one uh, fab was manufactured in Dresden, in US, and so on, China wars, and so on. This is the way how it's done today. Many machines, a lot of people, huge areas. Even more important, this is a challenge and opportunity. US, European Union, invent, uh, invest in mil billions, sorry, billions into the industry to secure this industry and production of microelectronics. This is a national security. 
And the war in Ukraine shows how this is also important because Russia, for example, cannot manufacture rockets anymore these days because they don't have the simple chips. So how we can protect ourselves, this is also the way how we can do this. But at the same time, it's a huge opportunity to bring the technologies and solutions that can change the way how we manufacture, simplify it, make it more sustainable. I hear many times today, sustainability, sustainability. How we can do this? Another angle, why we need to invent and develop new microelectronic technologies. We have a new trends, foresight in trends. Someone was talking about synthetic biology, AI, energy, displays, 5G, all of these technologies are using standard technologies like for microfabrication and they are slow. We need to speed up. The reason for this is that to develop a next generation AI chips, we need neuromorphic devices. These devices are very complex. At the same time, they are very simple. They need to mimic neuromorphic performance or neuron performance, and we cannot make them with standard approaches. The same about quantum technology, superconductive circuits. Imagine if we can 3D print these devices almost like at home. Can you imagine this can be done? Probably not, but I have a secret. <laughs> this is what, why probably Chipran was talking about me. We uh, met three years ago, actually four years ago, three of us in Barcelona for the conference and one for the beer afterward. And sitting drinking beer, me and Ivan, we decided that we can make a simple microchip that can print with atomic layers with atomic materials. So within one month, we filed a patent. We went and developed the technology that can print atomic layers. So what is this actually? We took a 3D printer technology or additive manufacturing and took exact, uh, already existing technology like atomic layer deposition and made the micro scale nozzle that allows to deliver gases through the very tiny channels to the surface. And these atoms of various materials automatically almost assemble one by another, creating a surface chemical reaction. So it's basically moving the nozzle, which allows you to print atomic layers. So this is literally what is shown here. What this technology gives, this technology can give a paradigm shift. Why? Because we're changing the flows of different technologies that never collaborate or collaborate just slightly. And we uh, create the single point, the singularity point, when we can merge a lot of technologies and create a new era of atomic layer advanced manufacturing. More important, here on Earth and in space, because this technology can work also in space. So in single picture, this is what we want to do. Take all this cumbersome infrastructure that exists today and make fully automated, manufactured, atomically precise machines. Machines that doesn't need even human to interact with it and give you the microchips that you can automate your life, make your life more sustainable, much better than what we have today. Imagine placing a digital file, charging gases, printing and getting this chip where it can be used. As I mentioned, microelectronics is used everywhere. These are just areas we identified for our company. Of course, it's too many areas, and we started with a few of them. The most critical, like display and the micro, med uh, micro uh, medical devices. We also have a space area. <coughs> As a, for space area, we started uh, in 2020, just reaching through LinkedIn to one of the NASA uh, managers saying, look, we, have, we invented this technology. We actually want to test it if it works. And he said, look, guys, I will almost close the project. And your technology allows us to bring to uh, orbit and test this atomically precise printing. We develop within a few months a proposal and start building the machine. Here you could see one of our machines. Now with that machine, we turn it into the machine that any researcher, any university can use. We call it nanofabricator. 
This also led that this year we uh, signed an agreement with ESA to build the first machine that can go to ISS, so International Space Station. So we want to deploy this machine and enable in-space manufacturing in the future as well. Bigger vision for us, we don't want to stop on Earth or just launching the machines. We also want to bring this technology on Moon, Mars, elsewhere. This is the technology that can enable advanced atomic layer printing, manufacturing of electronics on Earth and beyond. And with this, I just want to highlight what we achieved within three years. And we met with Chiprin at Hello Tomorrow, and uh, we're looking forward what actually else will happen. We are revolutionizing electronics, atom by atom. Thank you. But I want to take a few but. minutes. <laughs> yes, yes. Please. I'm Ukrainian. You see, we need to sink this ship down. So the Russian ship should go sink. Um, Oksana was telling a very heartbreaking stories. I, uh, I'm not living in Ukraine for nine years. Uh, however, <clears throat> I cannot leave this topic without attention. And um, we, as a company, hired the... Uh, a uh, few refugees, they came just before the war, one week, and uh, we could not allow them to go back. They working with us, they are making this, this technology to move forward. We have uh, Antonina parents living in an occupied area next to Mariupol. Uh, there are few difficult times for some of them happen, which I don't want to describe. Um, we helped to evacuate five families, and when Ciprian and Alexandra wrote me two months ago, uh, Maxim, do you want to participate in this summit? I was actually across the street with these few families, sitting and waiting for how we can book a flight to Copenhagen. And the next few days when I came back, I replied to Ciprian saying, yes, actually I'm, I was here, <laughs> probably we could meet for coffee, but uh, we didn't. This is Nastya. She is living right now with me in my home in Denmark in safety. And, uh, you know, she is already, uh, how it's scrolling? Crawling. Crawling go on a, on a, around the room. And she's a very uh, happy kid, you know. There are many kids in Ukraine that didn't survive or escape from country. And uh, they are um, in problems. Oksana show also uh, other pictures. There is a crisis, humanitarian crisis in Ukraine. There are a lot of problems, and each of us can help, either by, oh, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's another topic, either by hosting a family, donating, or, or, I don't know, reaching to your government, to your authorities to provide any different support. This war is also, you know, unique because um, Ukrainians are gaining uh, their identity and uh, even though it's very difficult to talk but at the same time I'm very proud about people of Ukraine, about our people because where you can see that a farmer can steal a tank, <laughs> where you can see that a simple soldier can sink a ship, where you can see that uh, amazing things can happen when volunteers are uniting and create something amazing. And this is also happening in Romania, when Romanian people united and made happening this here, helping Ukrainians. I had the, a privilege to meet such people who helped evacuate a few uh, families that I showed to you two months ago, and there are probably more than this. I'm very proud that we have an amazing president, uh, in the hard times, he became a hero. Instead of being a clown that a, a new politicians or old politicians became, he became a leader. And this is a good example for all of us, what we can achieve. And uh, as I mentioned, if you can, please support. If, uh, if we cannot, please do what you can with just a deed, with donation, whatever. Uh, Oksana showed the uh, QR code, how you can help. 
you can go to this website, also find the different ways to support. Uh, another way how you can support, there are a lot of wounded soldiers, a lot of wounded people in Ukraine. We in Denmark, uh, together with uh, volunteer organizations, we bring in now first a few people, wounded soldiers, to be rehabilitated in Denmark. I don't know if this is possible in uh, Romania, but if you have this opportunity, please support. Thank you. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I'm heartbroken and mind broken after this. Um, so, uh, there's a couple of questions. Uh, I know there's at least somebody here that was a bit, uh, whoa, you, when he talked about space. Um, but there's a question there, so can you have the mic there and then Aksu, I think, here in, in the front. Uh, huh? Uh, what? Oh, it's microchip is broken. You need to print. It. I, I guess it's already broken. Yes, I wanted to ask. Uh, there are like uh, various issues going uh, smaller with chips, like uh, quantum physics get in the way, heating becomes a problem, electron migration. There's also that, uh, and also rays from space that can push electrons around. So, how uh, can you make uh, smaller chips without, uh, without uh, having these problems? Uh, thank you for the question. It's quite uh, quite good question. Um, you know, uh, if you look on the architecture of all integrated circuits, they are like a city map. It's a 2D map. Streets, houses, and so on. There is a, a water container, some, some conjunction, like places where uh, the, the, the cross-sections and so on. If you look on integrated circuit, it's also 2D map, 2D structure. One way to uh, improve the microchips is actually make them to 3D. So there is, uh, this concept exists for some time. People, uh, particularly in US and Japan, playing with this concept for trying to integrate, but with existing technologies, it's, it's a very complicated process. I believe our technology can help to make a 3D integrated circuits. Of course, it will take some time. Second, um, you know, there is such materials as superconductors. They have uh, uh, the big, big benefit that reducing the thermal uh, budget or uh, the heating uh, in the integrated circuits, in, at the same time, improving the efficiency. So the problem with these materials, superconductors, that printing them or deposition processes them very difficult because they usually ceramic and they are not so easy to, to process. So imagine if you can have the machine like our machine that can directly 3D print superconductive integrated circuits which can uh, bring us easier to quantum computing, to much more advanced calculations and computing in general and making a next generation of electronics. Question here. If you can say who you are just in half a second. What type of materials can you apply to quantum beyond metals? As I, I mean, if so, I understood correctly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the question was about what type of materials we can process, right? Yes. Uh, we can process on top of any type of surfaces, even wood if needed, plastic. Okay. What type of materials we can print? Um, so this question, um, if I would have a chance, I would show you there is a link, atomiclimits.com, the website, that shows all the database of available materials for atomic layer deposition process. We're using atomic layer deposition process, and there are more than 450 different materials. Why is this possible? Because we use a chemical synthesis process. And with chemical synthesis, we can synthesize almost any type of material, of course, more simple structures, uh, we, with our technology, reproduce eight materials because we are the small startup, we have limited resources, uh, and they have very high purity. So you can imagine in the near future, with available resources, like uh, uh, the uh, futurologists were saying we need more capital to push such technologies. Yeah, we need a lot of capital just to explore more materials. 
So we can go for pure semiconductor, metals, oxides, sulfides, nitrides, and many other materials. And the more important, we can uh, place them one by one, so multi-layer printing. When, when, when Maxim says they're a small startup, that means they take up how much money so far as an investment? Uh, we just actually these days closing uh, our official first round, 13 million euros, so... This is a small startup, they just got 13 million euro. Yeah, it's uh, very I little. I hope you grow to a normal startup at least 50, you know... Yeah, I was saying, uh, <laughs> like, we need 50. But thank you so much for, for coming and, and thank you for giving us an opportunity to look uh, beyond technology and also to look deep within our hearts. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you. much for your attention.